to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Psalm chapter 1, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our broadcast. Today we're thinking about the man who has the happiest, the most blessed, and best life you could ever imagine. We're so glad that you joined us today. If you don't have your Bible handy, we want to encourage you to locate it as we're going to look at Psalm 1 to learn what God teaches us we can do to have the best life possible. As always, today's broadcast is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study, you will find people there who love God, who are concerned about souls, and who would be happy to help you in your study of the Word of God in any way they can. In fact, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering more about salvation or the church or, or how Christians live their life. There are people at the Lord's Church who'd be happy to sit down and discuss the Scriptures with you. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of God's Word. You can visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From that website, you can access all our materials. We have audio lessons, video lessons, study quiz questions, transcripts, just a wide variety of good Bible study material that is all available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our past lessons, we make those available to you free of charge as well. Just check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. Fill out a media request form. If you'd like to get it in a digital download, we can send that to you instantaneously. Or if you need it on DVD or CD, we'll be glad to make that available to you free of charge as well. And also in our fast-paced world today, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app. Uh, that's available to you in both iPhone and Android stores, and you can get that. It's a great way to study the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. Let's turn our attention today to think about what can a person do to live the most blessed life and the best life you could ever imagine. I want you to turn your attention. If you're not already there, I want you to open your Bible to Psalm chapter 1, and let's read this psalm together, and then let's know Notice some things we've got to avoid to have the best life, some things we've got to do to have the best life, and the benefit of that to us spiritually. Notice Psalm 1, beginning in verse number 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This initial start to the book of Psalms encourages us to walk the way God wants us to and to live the kind of life God wants us to so that our lives can be blessed in every way. Well, what's necessary then? For a person to live the blessed life, first of all, you've got to avoid certain things if you're going to live the blessed life. Look at Psalm 1-1 again. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits 
in the seat of the scornful. I've got to learn if my life is really going to be what I want it to be and what God wants it to be. There are certain things I've got to avoid in this life. Three things are mentioned in particular. I've got to avoid ungodly advice. Now, before we go down that path of the things to avoid, I want you to see something really important here. Did you notice the progression of sin? Somebody doesn't just wake up one morning or, or think to themselves all of a sudden, I think today that I will apostatize, I'll leave the Lord, I'm going to go get, live a life of sin. That's not the way it happens. There is a progression to sin. Here is a man who's walking. Next, we notice he is standing. And finally, we notice he is sitting in it. You start out with a little. That little progresses to more. Walking standing, and before you know it, you're entrenched in it. And so you've got to be very careful the path you choose, and that's why we begin by saying, to live the blessed life, you've got to avoid certain things. Number one, you've got to avoid ungodly advice. Blessed is the man, listen to this, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. What's the counsel? The counsel is the advice, the instruction, the, the ideology, the wisdom, uh, if we can use that word, of the ungodly. I've got to avoid that type of advice in my life. Friend, I want you to think about, as it relates to Christian living, I can't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I can't let ungodly people tell me how to live a Christian life. That's not going to work out. Revelation 21, verse 8, all liars, cowards, ungodly, abominable, adulterers, they'll have their place in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. The world would tell us just live like you want, just enjoy life, just, just live any philosophy. No, that won't work. I've got to do what Jesus said in Luke 9, 23. If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Friend, I also need to realize that avoiding ungodly advice means that I recognize the world's standard of morality is not God's standard. I've got to avoid ungodly advice as it relates to morality. We talk about morality, we're talking about wrong and right choices, wrong and right ways to live your life morally speaking. The world can't tell us how to do that. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Paul would say, whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, we've got to do all to the glory of God. There are two paths in life. There is a broad way that the world, that much of the world is going down that is easy with little restriction or little prohibition. And then there's the narrow way. There's the restricted way, God's way. Don't follow the path of the world as it relates to more. The world will tell you, just go out and have fun, live it up. The old Epicurean philosophy, we're just here for a little while. You may as well enjoy it and live it up while you can. Friend, that's not God's philosophy. God tells us to abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 following. And then as it relates to God Himself, let's not listen to ungodly advice about that. There are a lot of people who say things and claim things about God that just aren't true, that God's a capricious God, that, that God really doesn't care for you, that God just kind of wound the world up and let it go, that God can't help or do anything for you. Friend, that's not the picture of God in the Bible. 1 John 4 verse 8 is the picture. God is Love. God loves you. He loves you so much. He sent His Son to die on the cross for you, that He cares deeply for you, 1 Peter 5, verse 7, and that He wants your best as you strive to live for Him each and every day. And so you've got to avoid certain things. Number one, you've got to avoid ungodly advice. Secondly, you've got to avoid the influence of sinners in your life. Listen to Psalm 1-1 again. Blessed is the man who walks not the counsel of the godly. Now watch this. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Someone who's standing in the path of sinners 
is definitely being influenced by their lifestyle, is rubbing elbows with them, is going the same way they're going, that influence is liable, liable to affect you as well. And so we've got to realize, I've got to avoid the influence of sinners. Listen to 1 Corinthians, you've got to avoid the influence of evil associations. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, the apostle Paul would say, evil companions corrupt good morals. Proverbs chapter 12, the wise person should choose his friends carefully. Friend, you, you've got to make sure that the people that are in your circle of influence are not people who are going down the path of sin, not people who are living for the world, not people who are caught up in the devil and his devices, but rather we want our influences to be good Christian influences, people who will lift us up not drag us down, people who will encourage us to do not right, not discourage us from following God's way. You see, my influence for Christ is so powerful, I don't want anything to affect that negatively. Matthew 5, 16, Jesus said this, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Paul would say, Imitate me as I also imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. We're to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 and 22. Don't, just because it may be popular, just because your friends may be doing it, just because that's what everybody seems to be doing, you, there are times in my life, if I'm going to live the blessed life, I've got to avoid the influence of sinful people in my life. A third thing you've got to avoid. Not only do I have to avoid ungodly advice, not only do I have to avoid ungodly influence, I've got to avoid the lifestyle of ungodliness. Listen to Psalm 1-1 again. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, here it is, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. When you're sitting in that seat, you're driving the boat, you're driving the car, right? When you're sitting in that seat, you have let that become your path, your way of life, the direction you're going. Friend, you've got to avoid the lifestyle of ungodliness. When we say avoid the lifestyle of ungodliness, here's what we're talking about. Oftentimes, ungodliness is couched in selfishness. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. Why didn't I get this thing? Why did they do it? It's, everything is about I and me and mine and, and how everybody might have not done me right. No, that, that's the Christian. The lifestyle of ungodliness is such a selfish lifestyle. I've got to avoid that. I've got to realize I'm here to serve others as well. Mark 10 verse 45, the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve. I've got to realize that there's more to this world than just me and mine and, and I've got to think about others in that as well. The lifestyle of ungodliness, not only is it a selfish lifestyle, it's based on worldliness and, and greed and all that goes with that. And friend, that's something the Christian is clearly taught to avoid. Do not love the world or the things in the world. 1 John 2 verse 15. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know friendship with the world is enmity with God? The world and all that's in it is one day going to be burned up with a fervent heat, 2 Peter 3, verses 10 through 12. Don't let the stuff and the things and the attachments of this world, don't let those bog you down as to what you're really here for. I'm here and you're here to glorify God and to prepare to live with Him for all eternity. A avoid an ungodly life because often it's based on lust and godlessness. People in this world often respond and think about how will this make me feel good? What can I do to get this next impulse sensation? How can I gratify the lust of the flesh? Friend, that's not the way the Christian lives. We're to abstain 
from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, I realize I cannot be led by the flesh. I've got to be led by the Spirit of God, and that's different than the way the world thinks. And so avoid ungodly advice, avoid ungodly influence, and avoid the ungodly lifestyle as well. Well, let's shift gears then, and let's think about what then can someone do to live the blessed life, there are certain things I've got to accept if I'm going to be right with God. What are they? Look at Psalm 1 verse 2. The Bible says, But, this is talking about the blessed man, Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. To live the blessed life, I've got to accept the fact that I must love the Word of God each and every day. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Friend, how much does the Word of God mean to you? Do we understand that this book, the Bible, is the very Word from the mouth of God? 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. Do we really believe that, that, that we're to receive with meekness the implanted Word which is able to save our souls? Jeremiah said in the long ago in Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Your words were found and I did eat them. Listen to this. And they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Do we have that same mentality? If you're going to live the blessed life, Accept the fact that you must love the Word of God for what it can do, how it can impact your life, and how it can change you. And then we've got to accept the fact that Christians must study, not only love the Word of God, but think about and study God's Word regularly. Listen to Psalm 1-2 again. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And notice this. And in his law he meditates day and night. The sin problem doesn't begin here. It begins here. James 1 verses 13 through 15. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Part of living the blessed life is learning to think, like, like learning to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. Well, how do I do that? In His law, He meditates. Who? The blessed man. In His law, He meditates day and night. All the way back under the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. The writer tells us there, Put the law of God ever before you, like frontlets on your eyes, on your doorpost, on, everywhere, so that when you see that, you'll be reminded to live for God. Friend, I need to have that same attitude. I need to think about, I need to meditate, I need to make the Word of God my way of life and my standard for living. Listen to what Job said in Job 23, verse 12. Such a beautiful verse. Job said, I've not departed from the commandment of His lips. I've treasured the words of His mouth more than my necessary food. And friend, we've got to accept the fact that if I not only love the Word of God and I, I meditate on the Word of God regularly, I'm going to reap the benefits of the blessed life. Notice Psalm 1 verse 3. The Bible says, Of the blessed man, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. What kind of, what kind of benefits are we talking about? Think about the image here. A tree that is planted by the rivers of water. For a tree to survive and to thrive, it's got to have an adequate source of water. A, you imagine a big, magnificent, old oak tree. That oak tree has a good source of water somewhere. And because of that, it has flourished, it has grown, it has deep roots, it is producing fruit. It, it, it's, it's not going to be swayed back and forth. Friend, the benefits of living the blessed life are fourfold. Here they are. Number one. I'll be rooted. 
The Bible says that that person who follows God is going to have deep roots. He'll be like the tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he'll prosper. 2 Kings 19.25, the Bible tells us, Take root downward, bear fruit upward. John 15, verses 1 through 8, Jesus said, If we're connected to the vine, we'll bear fruit, and that fruit will bring honor to Almighty God. How are we rooted? Are we rooted in God and His principles and the Word of God? Friend, if so, the benefit is you're not going to be easily swayed. The world and the problems of it are not going to move you easily. Secondly, that person will be fruitful whose leaf does not wither, brings forth its fruit in its season. Pete, you can tell by a person's life if they're walking with God. They're not doing it for show, I understand that, but you can see the fruit, the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the goodness, the, the fruits of the Spirit that are mentioned in Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. You can see that in somebody's life. They're being fruitful. They're doing what they ought to do. They're living like they ought to. And that type of life brings honor and glory to God. Thirdly, you'll be faithful. He'll not be easily moved. That's the idea uh, uh, of staying true. Not, not being swayed. One who's going to stay the course. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. And then that person will be prosperous. Whatever he does will prosper. Now friend, this is not a, a social health and wealth type of gospel where the closer I walk with God, the more money God's going to put in my bank account and the bigger home. And the, that, that's not the idea. We're talking about prosper spiritually. I'm growing closer to God. I'm drawing near to God. I'm, I'm walking less for the world and, and more in the light of Jesus. And I have all the benefits, uh, 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 all the spiritual benefits that are in Christ. Forgiveness, fellowship, uh, the blood of Jesus. I'm prospering spiritually in every way as I walk and live close to Almighty God. But friend, we wouldn't do ourselves any favors today if we didn't also think about the man who doesn't do this. Look again at Psalm chapter 1. Notice verse 4 following. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Do not be deceived, Paul would say in Galatians chapter 6, whatever man sows, that will he also reap. You can't sow to the flesh and reap of the Spirit. You're not, you're not going to fool God. And please understand this, the sinner, the one living in a life of sin, the one not following God, his way is not going to be like the person who follows God. His way is not blessed. The wicked person what are they like? They're like chaff, which the wind drives away. That which is uh, uh, dry, that which is not the fruit, that which is uh, cast out to be burned, good for nothing, basically. That person's life is not bringing forth the indication and the fruit to God that it ought to. And as a result, they're cast away. They're not close to God. They don't have the benefits and the blessings that a Christian does. And then, of course, this passage teaches us they'll not stand in the judgment. Friend, the truth of the matter is it's appointed a man wants to die and then the judgment. All of us are going to leave this life. All of us are going to stand before God in judgment. Those who are going to be blessed at the judgment are those who are children of God, those who have tried to walk in the light and those who have tried to live the blessed life from the principles we've seen today. The wicked, they won't stand in the day of judgment. Two things will be said on the day of judgment. To those who are God's children, to those who've tried their best to live according to the Scripture, Jesus will say, Well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. 
to those who have not walked that way, to those who have walked in the counsel of ungodly, stood in the path of sinners, sat in the seat of the scornful, Jesus will say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Friend, when you live life, you've got to live it in such a way that that life is going to be blessed by following the teaching of God. Let's not fool ourselves. We're sure not fooling God. God knows if we're living like we ought to. And if we are, then friend, our encouragement today is keep living that way. Keep walking in the light. Your life is going to be better, especially spiritually, than you could ever imagine. If you're not living that way and you're not a child of God, don't you want to make some changes? Don't you want your life to be better than it is right now? Don't you want to have the blessedness, the happiness, the joy, the, 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 the foundation of God's Word to be your root and to be prosperous? Friend, if you're not a Christian, we encourage you to become one today. There is no Jesus said, I came that you may have life, and have it more abundantly. If the abundant life is not yours, won't you obey the gospel today? Do you believe Jesus is the Savior of the world? John chapter 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to turn from sin in repentance and turn to God? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you make that confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. And to have every sin washed away, would you be baptized into Christ? For the remission of your sins, Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Friend, our hope and prayer today in talking about Psalm 1 is to help our lives be better, to help each one of us to have the most prosperous life you could ever imagine, and ultimately for us to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. We hope you'll join us next time as we study more together. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.